Hey everybody, Casmo here, and today we're going to talk about the H64 and trim, and how to use the trimmer, and what the difference means. Big race, town six, you're cleared to engage. Lead is a rolling in, engaging south, north, left in, right out. Alright guys, let's talk a little bit about trim, because this word gets used a lot and sort of interchangeably, and we'll try to break it down into just normal layperson talk. So a lot of times what you'll hear about is put the aircraft in trim, which generally refers to leveling out the aircraft. And, and, and you're going to do that based on the relative wind, and you're going to pay attention to your trim ball, right? So that's going to tell you that the aircraft's in trim, and it's more of an aerodynamic state that the aircraft is in. If you look up the word of aerodynamic trim, you're going to find some stuff about uh, the aircraft being uh, level and control inputs and things like that. It, yes, but, but also no. Okay, when you hear about an aircraft being in trim and you're looking at the trim ball, it's essentially leveling off the aircraft based on the winds and the conditions that the aircraft is flying in. Which then brings us to the trimmer or the force trim. Helicopters use something called force trim, which is essentially uh, holding a control input into the controls. So when we look at a fixed wing aircraft, of course we have a fixed wing, the wing is not moving. It has control surfaces on that wing. So if you put in some left or right stick, you're going to see those ailerons roll. If you pull back or push forward on the stick, you're going to see the elevator uh, move and it's going to pitch the nose forward and down. But the point is you've got these control surfaces that I can then use the trimmer inside the aircraft to essentially move those control inputs, those control surfaces to a fixed point without actually moving the stick, right? If I hold the trimmer down long enough, those ailerons or those elevators will eventually move to the position just like if I held the control in that position. And that's how we trim the aircraft to maintain an attitude or a bank angle or, you know, whatever we're working with. So when we talk about force trim in a helicopter, what we're essentially doing is locking our controls into a certain place because we don't have control surfaces on the wings. Our wings are the control surfaces. They're small, skinny, whatever you want to call them, wings that are spinning around a central point and they themselves actually move and change the lift component across that rotor disc. So as we put in left or right cyclic, we're going to see those those blades flap up and, and move down and they're going to change and create a dissymmetry of lift, which is then going to roll that rotor disc. And then when we use the collective, we're going to collectively increase the pitch angle of the blades across the rotor disc, which is going to collectively increase the lift. And that's essentially how we go up and down. But as you watch here at the swash plate, you're going to see as I move cyclic left and right, we're changing those inputs. And so we don't have control surfaces to affect with a trimmer like we do in a fixed wing aircraft. So effectively, the only thing we can do is either hold the control in that uh, position to maintain that uh, pitch angle, that lift vector, whatever you want to call it, or we've got to have something to lock that control in place. All right, so here we are in the cockpit and you can see I'm moving the cyclic left and right, forward and back, and you can see that the blades themselves are sort of flapping uh, based on that cyclic input. And then when I raise the collective, you can see all of the blades are pitching up together collectively uh, to create lift. So again, what we're doing here is using the cyclic to change uh, the, the, the variation, if you will, of the pitch across the rotor disc, which is going to change that lift. Uh, it's going to create some dissymmetry of lift across the rotor disc, which is going to cause the aircraft to roll or, or pitch forward. Uh, and then as we increase the collective, we're just, we're just increasing the overall lift of the rotor disc itself. All right, so right now I just have the stick moving around and it is wants to be locked in place, right? The force trim, the aircraft has come to life and the force trim has got the stick here in the central position. If I push my stick forward and I release the stick, it's going to come back to center. Now, of course, the challenge that we have as DCS Apache pilots is the fact that we have hardware that is not necessarily linked to our software. And what I mean by that is some of you have a long stick with an extension. Some of you have a short stick up on your desk. Some of you have heavy springs like I do. Some of you don't. Okay, so some of you, if you have no springs, you could probably push your stick and just let go of it and it'll just stay there. I have pretty heavy springs. So no matter what, it wants to come back to center. All right, so 
we have to understand that there is not necessarily a one-to-one -one ratio between what's going on in the game and what's going on in the real world. And if you don't understand that, then the rest of what we talk about, the rest of what we do is not going to make any sense. All right, so here's our trimmer switch. You can see I'm interrupting the force trim, okay? That's the force trim release switch. In fact, you can almost see like there's a little R there. We're releasing the force trim because the trim switch, the force trim is always on. The trim switch disables it momentarily. So now I'm going to move the stick forward and left, and it's going to spring a little bit, but I'm going to release that button. My stick in the real world is back to center. My stick in the video game world is forward and left, okay? So right now, I've essentially changed those control surfaces we've talked about by changing the blades where they are as they go through the rotation, okay? Now, what I highly recommend you have mapped is the trim reset button. It just pops it back into place. This is not a real thing in the aircraft, but in the DCS uh, universe, I definitely think you should have it. I don't think you should use it in flight that much because it might kill you. All right, so we have to understand that we are essentially trimming the aircraft out just like you are in a fixed wing when you hit your little trimmer switch and you, you trim it out for left or right roll or, or you know a climb whatever you're trying to do it's the same concept but you have to physically move the stick and then the stick is going to continue to hold that position for you okay i'm seeing a lot of bad advice out there guys saying well i just don't use the trim well then you're not flying the aircraft properly and you're gonna have challenges with other things uh, as you fly it so once again, and I've covered this a million times before, I'm going to do it again. We're in our hover symbology. I have not trimmed the aircraft, okay? I've hit the trim reset button like five times right now, okay? I'm going to bring the aircraft light on the wheels. We're going to see that torque spike just a little bit because it's DCS. And you can see the aircraft's wanting to roll to the right, okay? I don't let it do that. So if it starts to roll to the right, I'm going to go ahead and put in... A little bit of left cyclic to counter that and the aircraft started to roll forward a little bit so I pulled back on the cycle I hit the brakes a little bit but basically my point is let the aircraft start to tell you what it wants to do and then prevent it from doing that so if it's going to the left then take it to the right if it's going to the right take it to the left and now I'm gonna continue to gently pull in the power and make minute corrections and maintain my position now, I have not hit the trimmer at all. We can sit here and hover like this all day long, but the moment I let go of my stick, we're going to start sliding because that's just the nature of how the controls are set up right now. So I'm going to arrest that movement, get us back to center as best I can. And what I'm going to do is as I'm doing this, I'm going to click that trimmer, meaning I'm going to put in little corrections to the stick and I'm just going to click it just a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to click right now. And it's a little going to the right. I'm going to click it again. That's a little bit too much. I'm going to pull it back to center. I'm going to keep clicking it. Until right now, my hand is completely off the cyclic. It's going to drift forward. So I'm going to pull back just a little bit. Click it again. A little bit to the right. Click it again. Okay, I'm just making minute corrections based on what my stick position is getting me. And then I'm just trimming it as I go. Now, this is not... Uh, a method by which you're meant to just trim it out so that it hovers by itself, okay? You can just get it close and then you can turn on the hold modes and then she'll eventually do the work for you, okay? But at a hover, you're not really meant to trim it out, but you can trim it out to the point that it's not super wobbly on you, alright? You should be making small corrections. Now, in game, we have the central trimmer and the instant trim. I have a long stick on my gunfighter uh, ultimate. Okay, it's got the long, I guess, 20 centimeter stick. I use instant trim. I have tried to use central trim. It works for certain situations, and in other situations, it's kind of garbage. If you have a short stick up on your desk, it seems to me from flying with people that having the center trim is better. So just play with both and understand that both of them are decent in certain situations and in other situations, both of them are hot garbage, okay? There is no perfect solution to this problem. You have to practice. And this is the part where I start to get a little bit frustrated with people because they pick this thing up and they think that, well, it doesn't do exactly what I want. Ergo, it is broken, okay? You actually have to practice. You have to learn the system and you have to understand the system. And if you don't understand what Force Trim is actually doing for us, in the way that I've described it, then that can be your first problem. And I've done a lot of lessons with people, 
and I've discovered that most of you just don't understand that. It's not because you're stupid. You just don't understand that. No one's explained it to you. Hopefully, I've explained it to you now. All right, so we've got the aircraft trimmed. I've had my hands off the controls uh, the entire rant here, by the way. Okay, my heading hold is on, so if I put in some pedal, the aircraft's going to want to fight me on that because it wants to maintain that heading hold. Okay, if I hit the trimmer right now, I'm going to reset that heading hold. But since I'm in DCS, it's probably going to send me on a little bit of a loop. So I don't want to put in a lot of motion. Okay, I'm just putting in just a tiny bit and I hit the trimmer. Okay, but I'm going to lose all that stuff that I had set for the cyclic as well. Okay, so things are going to get a little bit squirrely. That's okay. That's it's doing what it's supposed to do. Just understand that you're in the video game world and you don't have that perfect one to one. Okay, so all you've got to do is keep messing with the trimmer, keep making those small, minute corrections. And if things get really squirrely, just put it back down. Okay, if I can't, if I can't get it back under control where I want, just put it down and reset the trimmer. Reset all the trim for everything and start over. Okay. There is no perfect solution. There's no way that I or anyone else can tell you if you do this, then you will be successful and everything will be perfect. You've got to play with it and understand your limitations and understand when things are going to work and when things are going to be a little bit messy. And honestly, if I'm hovering for a short period of time, I'm probably not trimming it out that much. I'm probably not messing with the trim at all. But if I want to take off, I'm going to start trimming as I go. Okay. I'm going to make that transition mode. I'm going to look for my flight path vector. I'm going to put that flight path vector where I want to fly. And I'm going to make minute corrections and hit the trimmer as I do. Okay. And it's going to get a little squirrely at times. That's just the nature of flying this aircraft in DCS. Okay. I'm going to make small minute corrections and I'm going to continue to fly in the direction I want to fly. And the last thing I'm going to point out right now, so we've been talking about the trimmer. But remember what I first started talking about was aerodynamic trim. We are not in aerodynamic trim. We can see our trim ball down there is to the left. That's okay because I'm down low. I'm at 50 feet. I want to make sure that I have nose to tail trim, meaning that the nose and the tail are lined up in the direction of flight. And I can tell that's happening because my flight path vector is basically lined up right in front of me. I've got the head tracker, that diamond. Plus, I've got my acceleration cue velocity vector in a pretty much straight up line. If I want to be an aerodynamic trim, then yes, I'm going to put the trim ball between the goalposts. You can see the aircraft's kind of flying a little bit sideways. It's a little bit exacerbated in DCS, but even a real aircraft flies a little cockeyed. All right. It's, it's not symmetric. There's different airflows going across it. It's just kind of the nature of the beast and that's okay. If it looks like this, you're fine. You're flying the aircraft correctly. You are aerodynamically trimmed while I've been talking. I've been maneuvering the controls and clicking the trimmer. My hands are completely off the controls right now. The aircraft is trimmed to fly. I can tell I'm descending because the flight path vector is just a little bit below the horizon. I'm going to just nudge the collective just a little bit and get that flight path vector climbing back up. Also, I can look over at the right at my vertical scale and see that we're climbing just about 100 feet per minute. So I'm just going to make some little massages there. But from a cyclic standpoint, my hand has been off the cyclic for the past, I don't know, minute two minutes because I've got it trimmed. I don't even have the hold modes on. Now I'm going to turn on the hold modes and now she should work even better. Practice guys, practice. That's what you got to do. Don't watch YouTube videos and figure out, well, if so-and-so says this, then this is what I'm supposed to do. None of us can be held responsible to that standard. Okay. You've got to practice. You've got to get in there. You've got to talk to other people who maybe have a better understanding than you have them show you some things. Okay, but the best thing you can do is jump in, start flying around, start pushing buttons and stop being frustrated because it's not doing what you want to do the first time. This is hard. Okay. Flying helicopters is not like flying jets. And I'm telling you as a guy who's done both flying helicopters is harder than flying jets. hundred percent. Hopefully this helps. We'll talk about it more in the future. I'm sure we'll talk to you guys later. Take it easy.